All right, this video is called Tool Stories. And uh, I want to tell you, in life, if you don't know something, ask somebody. Okay? Look around. There are a lot of answers out there if you're willing to look for it. Now, uh, this is was sort of a mystery tool. As I'm cleaning up, I remember this. This has a magnet on the end. And uh, sort of picks up stuff for retrieving. And uh, I asked my father one day, where do you get this? Oh, oh. So uh, as I'm cleaning up, I got this tool, and it was my father's. And I, I get my eye loop. I'm looking for the name of the company. I look up in here, and it says Babs. And I'm like, Babs? See, I was on the bowling team for uh, the company. And I remember Babs was the woman that worked up in the front office. And I'm like, why would the woman... Uh, have a tool and she gave it to my father but then I remembered she was the woman that put my father's name on all his tools she used to uh, scribe it on there or she had a vibrating tool so I'm thinking alright so Babs gave this to my father and it's a magnetic retrieving tool and uh, and then I just sort of look at it I'm looking at this tip here you know you press it nothing happens it's knurled and then it's it says Lufkin on it I'm like, wait a minute, Lufkin's a really good tool. Why would they just make a, a magnetic retrieving tool? That's what my father said it was. It wasn't. You turn this. This is so typical. See, my father had a really bad memory. All right, you turn this around. Now you got an engraver to write your name in tools. Okay? Now, this is a Radio Shack engraver. And I went through a bunch of these. My father would borrow it. He'd drop it. There's a carbide tip on the end of this. My father would knock the tip off. He would he would then sand it down or grind it down, put the tip back on it. I'd put, take it out of my toolbox to go to use it. And I'd say something. Oh, uh, tip, there was a tip on it. Or he would just decide every time to sharpen the tip of this. This is a piece of carbide on the end. It's for scribing your name in tools. That's what this tool is for. To put your initials in a tool. Uh, he wouldn't like the tip. He'd go over to the grinder and put a better tip on it, but he would knock off the piece of carbide. And he did at least five of them on me, okay? And then finally, I started hiding the tools on him. Uh, he would get mad at me, you know, being selfish. I wasn't selfish. I said to him, you don't handle tools correctly. You know, he was a tool maker, but he didn't respect his tools. And I have tools that they're 30, 40 years old. Now, actually, they're older than that. They're from when I was a little kid. All right. Now, the next thing is um, I'm working at TRW, and TRW had bought out Singer, the sewing machine companies, part of their company, which made a computer. And it was used in all the Sears stores, and uh, TRW bought it out, and they were doing the service on the computer. And this is the exacto knife they gave us, okay? When I first worked there, this is it. Now, you press this button on the back here, and this real fine little tip comes out really nice for this is a stencil knife but we use it to cut little tiny traces all right so the guys wouldn't retract the tip you know it's very hard to do see you have to push this button and they would drop it and the tip would get broken off and they throw it away well at some point they wouldn't buy these for us anymore and they didn't have the replacement blade this is the replacement blade and what I would do is, when they would throw this away, I'd pick it out of the garbage. I have a few of these. And then I went to a place, and uh, a drafting place, and I got the tips. And I was giving them to the guys, but these were up to, I think, two bucks each, something like that. I said, you know what? I'm not supplying the company with uh, blades anymore, out of my own money. For people that, you know, don't want to push the button. Lazy, don't want to push the button, drop it, break the blade off constantly, like 10 year olds. All right, so the company replaced it with this. All right, this is a this is a no name exacto type knife. Look at this. Wait, let me push it. Look at this. Okay, no matter what blade you put in here, it does that, and you can't tighten this up. It's a piece of junk. I mean, an absolute piece of junk. But this is what the guys were left with because they wouldn't push the button 
you know, I was willing to buy these tips. All right. But, you know, I see that I treat it. Ten-year-olds. So I stopped doing that. But it was the first group. Uh, I was there the first, like, first six months when they really, uh, I would say, the smarter techs were there. And then we got this one boss, and everybody started quitting. Okay. And I stayed, and I should have quit. But I kept losing, losing jobs. But here's the box that those blades come in. And I have a tape. I had a tape dice. Look at the tape over the years dried out. But this is the go-to uh, X-Acto knife when you want to cut traces. I mean, you can cut really tiny traces. And the reason you cut the trace is uh, you want to isolate the short. Or you're doing a modification. And where I worked, you, you had a lot of boards that could be plugged in backwards. And they'd blow almost every IC out on the board. And... Um, you really had to cut traces, okay? It was an everyday thing. It wasn't once in a while. Now, this is a automatic center punch. It's probably got a real name to it. You hear how it works? You push this down, you get it in the spot, and it dents it. I've showed you this before. But what I want to show you is, uh, I tell you, my father brought, would bring these home from work when they didn't work anymore. And then when I asked him one day what it was, he kept trying to uh, show me how it worked, but it didn't. And he kept playing with this back thing. And this is the adjustment for how hard you want it to hit. Okay? But it stopped. It wouldn't punch. It would spring, but it wouldn't punch. Okay. So I bought a couple of these. And one day, one of them went bad. So I open it up. I look inside. And I'm like, I can't see the problem. All right? So I go on Google. It's the equivalent of asking somebody. Okay? When you don't know something... Go look for the answer. All right. Now, if you undo this back piece, out will come a spring. Here's the spring. And then this, this, this large, I won't say large, but this piece of steel with a hole in it. Okay. Hopefully that's in the frame. You have to make sure that this stays level. Nice and smooth and level. Because this part, this other part, let me show you the other part. You'll never see this type of stuff on, on uh, YouTube. All right, this, this piece here would be the plunger. Here it is here. When you push up on this, this part starts to deflect, and it falls through the hole. But it's under a certain amount of pressure. So if that part doesn't stay level, what happens is uh, it'll form a groove. And when you go to press down on this, it'll jump, it'll jump into the hole right away. All right, so all you have to do is keep the back side of the plunger smooth or level, and then that hole, the, the surface of the hole, level, and this tool will work forever, okay? Or unless one of the springs lets go. But I want to do these tool stories, and because uh, it's pretty funny stuff. Now, I worked at a, at a shop right in Nutley, and uh, somebody clipped one of these on me, and I went and asked the foreman, for another one, I said, somebody clipped my body. Oh, you're taking them home. So I did. So I started taking them home. And, I, and once once every two weeks, I'd ask them for a new one. Just to annoy them. But I brought some of them home. But these are these are for opening boxes in a, in, a, in a grocery store. Okay. And if they say, I stole this, where's my overtime money you never paid me? Yeah, it's pretty funny stuff. But I just want to show you, you know, there's all kinds of tools. And as soon as someone exposes you to one of them, and it works correctly. Uh, for years, I would take a scribe and push it down really hard and make a dimple. Then I'd take a little drill, put it in that dimple, and open it up. Then come in with my drill. And then finally, uh, I kept seeing people use these. And like I said, my father kept showing me it, and it didn't work. And he'd, buy, he'd bring broken things home from work. And he'd bring things home. Oh, this is a, this is a magnetic retrieving tool. No, it's a scribe. It's for putting your initials on tools. But I didn't know. I didn't know. But I'm asking. I in inspected this going. Well, before I throw this out, uh, let me see well, who makes it. And then I saw Babs right away. And I'm like, Babs, that woman worked up in the front office. What would she be using a magnetic retrieving tool for? And then I looked at that knurled knob on the end, took it open. You saw it. It's a, it's a, it's a tip for a scribe. And it's not even worn. So this tool... This tool's really never been used because my father probably forgot. Okay, he, like I said, he had a, 
a memory that wasn't even good for, for nine months or six months, okay? And uh, if you watch the television show and then they run a repeat, sometimes they, they run a, a new TV show and uh, say Christmas comes up or Easter and they run the show again. And my father's watching. And I, I come by and I look at it and go, I said, you watched that before. No, I didn't. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's sitting there and goes, this seems so familiar. I said, because you saw it before. And he would double down. And then he'd go, would you want to put something else on? I go, yeah, you remembered the ending, huh? And he'd get mad at me, okay? But I had a really good memory. My memory is still pretty good now. But for 70, I think it's pretty good. I mean, to the average person, uh, I, uh, I told you that woman I was walking with. And she, she told me one time about this club she joined. And then I mentioned the club. I said, do you still go to that club? What club? And I said, uh, I mentioned the building and the street it's on. And she's looking at me like like foggy. She looked foggy. I said, you think about it for a while. And then she, she goes, um, oh, oh, that building got knocked down. Okay, so the building you never went to, and it wasn't a club, you know that it got knocked down. Oh, fine. And then she goes, well, it got knocked down because there was a sinkhole in the cellar. They couldn't. Okay, so now the building you never went to for a club uh, got knocked down. And you know why it got knocked down, because of the sinkhole inside. And I said, it's in front of the church. And then she says, well, that's where the club is, the church. I said, did you ever go in that building outside? Because you specifically told me the meeting was in that building. She goes, you know, I think it was. Okay, that's five years ago. Or, yeah, or maybe a little more. And I, I, so I remember her telling me the story about the club she joined. She was all excited when she first moved here. I told her some of the things that she could find and stuff. And she told me about these clubs she joined to talk to other people to find out where everything is. And uh, she had totally forgot. And then I said, you know, when you talk to me, I do listen. And I remember what people tell me. And, I, and then I realized they don't remember they told me. And that, that, that's like I said, you got the people that keep telling you the same stories over and over. Which I tell you this. I'm telling you that there's people that tell you the same stories over and over. Which I think is basically the same problem, right? But anyway, I just wanted to show you these tools. I know some people really like tools. But, like I said, when I saw these things, exacto, you know, who would, you know, it's a stenciling pen. When would you ever run across something like this? We all know what exacto sets look like. But here, Singer provided their techs with really good tools. And we had a, a tool for removing ICs. I don't have one. But it was a pair of pliers that looked like this. Okay, I can't get the 3D like that. See how my fingers are bent? And you, you, the, the, there was tips here. You cut the tray, you cut the, the pins, and then you went across the IC, and and cracked it or whatever you wanted to do. Sometimes you, you unsolder the chip, you go across it like this, and you crack it. You crack the pins loose from the traces, and then you rock it, pull it out. But on the tips, there were cutters, and the tool got up to thirty-eight dollars. And the new tech or the new uh, boss who didn't want to buy these for us anymore, didn't want to buy us the other tools anymore. He kept buying junk, okay? He kept buying us these things to work with. You know, at the time, these were uh, three bucks each, okay? You get these free when you buy a desoldering station. But it's amazing tools, okay? Like I, I showed you, uh, this was from RCA, Ex 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 Exolite. I can tell you I bought this from Route 46 Electronics. I remember when I bought this. Uh, I had a unit, you would dial, there was a dial on here to set the thickness or the cutting. And the guys in RCA had this. You set the you set this screw here for uh, most common wire. And uh, they, they could cut into uh, insulation and strip it without cutting the uh, inner core or the, uh, the lead that would be the, the conductor. And... Uh, they mocked the thing I had, so I bought this pair. I had it ever since. It's getting dull. I went on, uh, I bought one at Harbor Freight. This thing's so hard to squeeze, it's like an exercise tool. And then uh, this one here, I went on eBay, and they showed the picture for this one. Hey, hey, look, it's working. The magnet's working. They showed, me, they showed you this one in the picture, but they send you this thing. Same company, but made China. And only one of these drawers is... is uh, is sharpened. It only cuts on one side. So one of these days when I'm in a real good mood, I'll sit down and take a stone, fix the old one first. Okay. Because these can be resharpened. But I said, let me buy a new pair. 
you know. Now this old pair, I took this thing off. I took the spring off. You know, it made it much nicer. It, if you like it this way. Some people leave a tool original. Okay. That's the way I roll. Okay. But I just wanted to show you some tools. And I have all kinds of favorite tools. I use these a million times. These are, these are craftsmen. They're a little tiny pair of pliers. And uh, when I scribe circuit boards, uh, I use this for cracking the circuit board. It, these, these get used a lot. Okay. I think that's it. All right, that's it.